In this episode of DU Nation, we're hunting public land on the Missouri River. It's October and a big front is pushing across North Dakota, which should be forcing ducks south. We're joined by Mike Anderson, JJ Malvitz, and Drake Waterfowl's Vice President, Justin Carpenter. Originally, uh, we were going to be hunting some shallow water marshes um, a few hours from here, and the weather started to change last week. We had to uh, go back to the drawing board, come up with another plan, because we figured a lot of those waters could be frozen up. So we went about three hours away, um, now hunting the Missouri River the last couple days. I always say like up here where we hunt these rivers, they're like uh, the, the flooded woods of the north. You know, this river that we hunt here, the Missouri River, the way that the cuts are and the, the, the sloughs are, the way they set up, you know, we're going through cuts into sloughs, where down south they're going through uh, ditches and, and, and fire roads. This is our, our uh, woods of the north, and it's just something about it. And, and the ducks follow the rivers, um, and the Missouri in particular. I think of all the rivers in, in this country, you know, the Mississippi is obviously the biggest one, but I think the one that means as much as any, if not more, as far as the migration goes, is the Missouri River. If you look at where it starts to where it ends up, you know, you, you get straight north of where it starts, it's Alberta and Saskatchewan. You get right to where it starts to start heading east and west. You've got eastern North Dakota, South Dakota. It's just kind of the perfect storm for birds to follow that migration route. So this has been some of the more dramatic changes in weather. Yeah, more. Twenty years ago, we told the line prior to the weather. Come on in. Hey, hang out, Carl. We got to get Gordo and Buster in here. Yeah. When we hit the ditch. I'll probably have you stand here. Okay. Give me the points as we go by. River running. We got to wave from the point as we come around. Yeah. Yeah, someone's in the hole. We'll have to get turned around, JJ. They're probably blacked up the whole time. I'll just start getting into the channel. This first morning didn't go exactly as planned, but that's about par for the course when it comes to duck hunting. While turning around to get out of a hole that somebody beat us to, we dug our prop into the bottom, bending the fins and forcing us to limp back to the boat ramp to fix it before continuing. Hey JJ, how's my prop look? It doesn't feel well. Shiny's okay. Um, aluminum prop plus sand and rock equals no boy no. Good thing I carry an extra. What do I think? I think if that stays up, we're killing them. We're killing green. Oh, yeah. And I think we're gonna kill our ducks no matter what, but I think if that stays up, we're killing them. Well, should we just putt our way up river? Nice I'll follow like you. you have in that other prop that can keep up. I'll follow you, because I'm not gonna go slow. After replacing the prop, we ran out along the main channel again until we found a good cut that was unoccupied. This meant it was already daylight by the time we got set up. This first day was clear and cold okay. the whole time.
shoot these two. Shoot these two. Now, right here. That one's pretty lively. Because they're nice and squared up in the middle and then they just slide off. I also think by the time that we stand up, they get 15 yards. They get 15 yards. <laughs> The next day we made it out when we wanted to and we hunted the same spot, except this time it was cloudy and snow started to move in towards the end of the hunt. On the way down, Adam <laughs> boy. <laughs> that was actually really good. Shooting for that. Actually, I think it's an immature Drake. <laughs> oh, it is, Ed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well. Widgie. This is the one you double tapped him on his way down. Yeah. That was pretty impressive. I will say that was the, probably the shot of the day. <laughs> I wasn't letting that thing be crippled. What we had going on here, you know, we had a lot of birds push in. The problem was with clouds mixed with those birds, and then we had some sun mixed with those birds. Um, the first day, um, spot one, ran into people. Spot two, ran into people, and then I go and shred a Try to prop, thinking that uh, my new my new outboard is a mud motor, and I learned that it was not, so we had to change it. So we got to our third spot. It didn't get set up until nine o'clock, and had a pretty good day. And then today, the biggest thing is uh, with those clouds, it was really hard to hide from. We went and we cut cover. We tried to uh, uh, cover the blind as best we can, but we're still something that wasn't there that now is there. And them birds are tough in this gray, gray skies. I think the big push is going to happen. I think a big push did happen. I don't think it's be pushed, but I think, you know, I got buddies in Canada right now that uh, said the mallards just showed up for them earlier this week, but now at this point, they're already almost gone. 
I think right now in North Dakota they're loaded up, but they got 18 inches of snow in, in, in Jamestown. I think what we're having right now is what'll happen normally in the middle of November and December. We're in October you know, 25th instead. We ended this trip with a mixed bag of some gadwall, widgeon, teal, and mallards. Then we headed to western South Dakota to do some field hunting for the ducks that hadn't moved south yet. Hey, we got a grievance. This boat has a grievance. Uh, we were promised breakfast at 8 o'clock. Hey, they're going to stop serving. I'll talk to the kitchen.